Good morning, Downtown Academy, and welcome to Remote Chapel. I hope this week's been going well for you. Like we've mentioned before, we don't think that these videos can replace being together in person for chapel, but we know that God is still worthy of our worship and still delights in our worship, so we're trying our best. And just like an in-person chapel, we'll be worshiping God in three specific ways. Praying to Him, singing His praises, and learning about Him through His Word, the Bible. Let's start in prayer. God, in spaces like our weekly chapel, you remind us that Jesus is alive, and because of Him, we get to be a part of your forever family. Please let the way that we worship together now remind us to worship you in everything we do, through the power of the Holy Spirit, who reigns with you and our King Jesus forever as one God. Amen. Let's sing together. Let's sing this little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine all around the world, all around the world. I'm gonna let it shine all around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 24, which says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. We'll talk more about those verses later, but for now, let's continue to sing. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. But if you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the Spirit. But if you want to be a banana, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the Spirit, because the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon, it's so heavy. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. But if you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the Spirit, because the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. Oh, it's so sour. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. But if you want to be a lemon, you might you hit
Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not grapes. This is me graping with you. Oh, but if you want to be grapes, you might as well hear it. continuing our focus on self-control, and to do that, we'll take another look at those verses from Titus. Let's read them again. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Now, the guy who wrote Titus, whose name is Paul, is using a lot of big words here, but I might say the same thing a little bit more like this. Jesus is God with us, and he saved us from our sin. He also sets a perfect example of the way that life works best and helps us to live that way by using self-control through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's even more exciting that Jesus is returning one day to be with his people, who he is using to help make the world better than brand new. Self-control, which we've defined as letting our heart and our brain work together for our good, is important because it lets us do our job as God's people, which is helping him make the world better than brand new. That might sound like an impossible job, but luckily, our part is pretty simple. By trusting God through obedience, we're able to live our lives the way that he designed, which shows the entire world how life works best. God knows exactly how being a person is meant to work, because he made us after all. However, it's easy to lose sight of the way that we're meant to live, so we use our self-control to remind us how life works best. Choosing the best way to live is easy sometimes, but we can also be honest and say that sometimes it's really tricky. Sometimes things that aren't good for us seem good in the moment, and other times we try to have too much of a good thing even though we're only supposed to have a certain amount. We see this dynamic at work when it comes to video games. I don't have to remind you that video games are cool, and I'll be the first to say that in general they're good for us to enjoy. At the same time, we all know the ways that they can become a problem. Video games can help us engage in competition with our friends, which can be really fun and even a good way to grow as people. But sometimes it can be hard to remember to be a good sport, especially when we're getting trash talked over a headset. Video games can also be a good way to relax and have fun, but if I choose to play video games instead of attending to a responsibility of mine, I'm in trouble. It's really all about how we choose to play, isn't it? Video games, like so many other things, are good for us if we use them the right way. Kind of like a hammer. A hammer can help us build things, but it can also smash things. It all comes down to how it's used, and so many other things work exactly the same way. Sometimes it's really straightforward to remember to use self-control, and other times it's really tricky and complicated. Either way, the Holy Spirit gives us everything we need to make the right choices. We never have to go at it alone. When we choose to be obedient in the way that life works best, it's like we're lighting the way for others to do the same, which is really what our job as God's people is all about. God built everything to lead us to himself, and his presence is better than anything. Jesus is coming back one day to finish the job of making the world better than brand new. We want to be able to help in that, even though it's his power that's going to ultimately get the job done. He still lets us help, kind of like when your parents let you stir the cake batter, even though they really made the cake. Really, God lets us help in his work as another way of showing how much he loves us. He gives all of us special ways of showing how great he is and how amazing it is to get to be a part of his family. Let's pray to him together. Lord, thank you for sending Jesus to save us and to show us how life works best. 
Thank you for giving us your spirit to help us use self-control and for letting us join you as you make the world better than brand new. Thank you for giving us the hope that Jesus is returning and please let it be soon. Amen. You know God, my God, God is good. Chapel, y'all. See you next time for our last one.